One of the big announcements at the UN Climate Conference this weekend in Dubai was a pledge by more than 110 countries to triple the amount of renewable energy they're generating by the year 2030. As William Brangham reports, that work is already underway in a state that might surprise you. This story is a collaboration with the Global Health Reporting Center with support from the Pulitzer Center. If you had to guess which state in America was hands down producing the most green renewable energy, what would you guess? California? Massachusetts? It's Texas. The state that epitomizes oil and gas and got rich powering the nation for decades is now the biggest producer of wind and solar. So how did deep red Texas turn so green? It's not unusual for Texas to do all the right things for all the wrong reasons, and the rise of renewables is one of those examples. Michael Weber studies the energy transition at the University of Texas and is author of Power Trip, The Story of Energy. We didn't do it for the cleanliness. We didn't do it for climate change. We did it because it makes us a lot of money for the landowners and saves us a lot of money for the consumers. One study found that all this cheap renewable energy is saving the average Texas household almost $200 a year, though skeptics say that figure may be inflated. There are a slew of factors that contributed to this boom. Texas's geography is one. Rob Minter works for the energy company Engie, which has major renewable projects across the state. It's a big state. There are a lot of areas where it's sunny and it's windy. In the wide open spaces of West Texas and South Texas, there are some wonderful areas for development of renewable resources. Texas also had its share of influential oil men who saw the light on renewables. People like billionaire T. Boone Pickens. The session will mean lower electric rates for people all across the spectrum. There's even one, one who became governor. In 1999, then Governor George W. Bush, working with a Democratic legislature, signed a law deregulating Texas's power market to make it more competitive and enshrined a state mandate for wind power. He wanted to support wind power. Emily Foxhall covers the energy industry for the Texas Tribune. There were landowners who were willing to lease their land for these new uh, industries. These new fangled in industries. Yeah, it was a new way for them to make money um, when perhaps they were struggling to do so with agriculture. Texas had a mandate before England, before California, before New York. You, you know, list all these liberal economies, and Texas had a renewables mandate before them. Today, the Lone Star State generates more megawatts of wind power than any other in the nation. When it comes to solar, Texas trails only California and actually ranks first in utility-scale solar projects. Combined with nuclear, Texas now generates almost 40% of its total energy needs from carbon-free sources, a huge surge in just a few years' time. Texas, of course, like so many other parts of the country, has suffered through a string of climate-driven disasters. They just had record-breaking heat waves this past summer, and this area is always under threat from hurricanes. In fact, six years ago, when I was here for Hurricane Harvey, this entire area was underwater. The interesting piece here is, you know, climate change is the context through which we should be talking about all of this, right? Like the reason we have this renewable power coming onto the grid is because in order to slow climate change, we have to slow carbon emissions. But in the Texas legislature, you really don't hear climate change coming up. In fact, Texas's renewable boom isn't always being celebrated. During 2021's paralyzing winter storm in Texas, which caused widespread blackouts and left 246 people dead, renewables were falsely blamed for making things worse. Governor Greg Abbott had this to say. Our wind and our solar got shut down and, and that thrust Texas into a situation where it was lacking power. And this shows how the Green New Deal would be a deadly deal for the United States of America. But a subsequent analysis showed it was unwinterized fossil fuel plants, principally natural gas, that were responsible for most of the blackouts. The biggest failure was by far the gas system. So about 85% of the gas production in West Texas froze up, about 50% statewide. In this year's legislative session, Republican legislators, many with the support of the fossil fuel industry, introduced a slew of anti-renewable bills, 
including a new tax on owners of electric cars. I have to pay a $200 annual fee in Texas to register this car. I'm subsidizing gasoline and diesel drivers around the state. The focus was on how to punish renewables, how to punish wind and solar. The grid needs to be reliable. Wind and solar are not reliable. So goes the story. Therefore, we need to punish wind and solar. But in a surprising turn, almost none of the anti-renewable bills passed and made it to Governor Abbott's desk. The Senate will come to order. Proof, Michael Weber says, that green energy in Texas has become more or less politically bulletproof. The urban Democrats like it because it's clean and renewable, and the rural Republicans like it because it's good for economic development. Texas's clean energy boom is also being driven by its ready-made army of workers and entrepreneurs coming directly out of the oil and gas industry. So if you think about any time you've gone hiking. Tim Latimer is the CEO of the geothermal company Fervo Energy. Geothermal energy comes from drilling underground to tap the heat below the Earth's surface to spin electrical turbines. And because we're not burning anything or combusting anything, we're just using the natural heat of the Earth, what we can do is produce electricity around the clock, 24-7, and do so without carbon emissions. You know, when we talk about bringing that geothermal heat up, it comes It's up. an ironic twist. Today's advanced geothermal would not be possible without the drilling and fracking technology developed for natural gas. When I started my career in oil and gas over a decade ago... Latimer, like so many within Texas's larger renewable industry, started his career in fossil fuels. What we see as time goes on is people have realized that climate change isn't a far off problem. They're still passionate about providing affordable energy to the world, but the priorities shift a little bit because of how urgent the climate crisis is. And I think there's a lot of people who, who have made that realization um, just like I have. None of this means that Texas has turned its back on fossil fuels. It is still by far the national leader in oil production and natural gas production. And this is the essential challenge for negotiators gathered in Dubai. How quickly can the world's powers shift this balance and transition as fast as Texas, if not faster? For the PBS NewsHour, I'm William Brangham.